Hey guys, welcome back and thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Black Millennial Life. I'm Jet. And I'm Avis. So we're going to start off this episode like we do all of our episodes and we are going to highlight a Black business. So the first one that I would like to highlight is called Joyful Gems. Um, the link will be below, but they do like jewelry, accessories and stuff. Um, and what I really like is the barrettes that they have. So I'm wearing two right now. And I also have a couple other ones. This one is a really pretty one that I thought was really nice. So um, just really like kind of gaudy, like jeweled up um, accessories. They do these really nice headbands too. So um so go support her. Um, it is a Black-owned business. She ships really fast. Everything is very affordable price. And I've been having fun with her little accessories. I just bought something else too. So she getting all my little money. <laughs> all the <them> coins. <laughs> okay, so I would like to uh, highlight Bows and Glitter Boutique. I actually happened to model for this boutique, but they have adorable clothing. It started off for um, young girls, little girls, babies, and things like that. And she grew into um, women and children clothing. So she has absolutely beautiful clothes, great quality. She can be found um, on Instagram at bows and the ampersign glitter. And she can also be reached online at bows in the letter in glitter.com. Um, so yeah, really cute clothes, go support. She does vendor events all over the Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth area. If you're in this area and if not for sure, reach out to her online. She also runs promotions, things like that. Join her mailing list um, and you will not regret it. So let's go ahead and get into the conversation. Now, this was something that I prayed about, uh, talking about, and we discussed me praying about it, making sure that the Lord was in agreement with us having this conversation, um, because it is a conversation that can be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I don't know, maybe like a tough conversation to have, especially considering circumstances. So, I will start off by saying, um, when you get married, I will venture to say, maybe even engaged, one of the first questions I got was, when are you having kids? I'm sorry, he just asked me to be his wife 24 hours ago. When am I having what? Wait a minute. Is it just, was it just me? Was I the only one that was asked immediately? No, no. They asked. I just, I don't understand why that is people's first question. I think people just, they want you to complete your family right away. Like, what their their definition of completing your family they want to see that happen fast they don't give you a second to like catch up to what's already happened so i think it comes from a i don't know selfish place in people i think it does too i mean because as of the moment of us getting married my family is complete <laughs> it's me and my husband we are complete in that moment. Like we're just starting our life together and boom, out of nowhere, everybody's hitting you with this question. Yeah. And okay, it's fine at first, but then you fast forward and it's still just like the question on everybody's lips. And the one thing that I want to say for everybody out there, uh, number one, Google is free, okay? One in eight women struggle with infertility. One in eight, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. One in eight, so you count eight of your friends out and one, maybe more, especially if they're black women, struggle with infertility mm -hmm. and to have that question especially 
when you may not know someone's story be the only question you ever want to ask somebody get your whole life pack your bags <laughs> and move out west because i can't i can not deal and it's so i feel like it's so inconsiderate of people yeah. especially and and i want to preface this by saying you know what side of the spectrum you fall on if you're in someone's life and you know their story and they're comfortable talking about their story with you or you know if you're on the other side of the spectrum and you have no idea you just keep running your mouth and asking when you're gonna have babies like if you don't fall on the other side to where that person has already talked to you and confided in you about it it need not ever hit your lips period because you don't know what that person or that couple's struggle is. Maybe they decided they don't wanna have children and they know they're gonna be looked upon as a, a pariah in the community for not having babies because that's what society does. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I, I feel like I have been guilty of asking that question to people. Um, you have, for sure. Yeah. Probably before I started realizing that my friend group, like people in my life, like other women in my life were struggling. Like, and when they started to share those stories with me, I started to become more sensitive to not asking that of people. Like, you'll tell me when and if you're pregnant. Like, I don't have to ask like when's the baby when's the baby when's the baby so yeah yeah and i think that i like as everybody has i've asked the question um but i think that either once you are married have been married i don't care if you got divorced have your own children um i think common sense kicks in you know, where this isn't a question I should just be asking any and everybody because whether you've struggled yourself or whether you know somebody that has struggled or even if you don't, back up off my ovaries. <laughs> These is mine. <laughs> they are mine, back up off of them. So where this conversation is stemming from is I think if there's one place in our lives and our relationship um, where we have the difference is in this situation. Um, and I will speak for myself first, is that uh, we have been married for eight years, which we've shared. Um, and of course, that has been the number one question on many of people's lips. Um, and anybody that knows me knows my story anybody that i care about and want to share with knows my story everyone else does it um but i feel like it's important to share because it is um it's such a prevalent thing and people don't realize how much their insensitivity hurts um so for myself and my husband um, we got pregnant three years ago after trying for about a year, got pregnant, had a miscarriage, um, probably one of the toughest points we've ever had to go through in our marriage, um, and went through a period of not trying to get pregnant just because of the hurt that went along with it, and then have restarted that process of trying to get pregnant and not able to. Um, and it was a conversation I wanted to have because just, I mean, just, we just went on a vacation and posting a picture of me and my husband, people come into my DMs and ask me, so I hope you're on this vacation working on a baby. What? That that's what I, that's where this is going. That's where this frustration is coming from. Um because 
whether I am or whether I am not is none of your business. But then at the same time, I get a comment on one of my pictures that comes from somebody that I know and love and knows my story and says something very sweet and very respectful and very appropriate, which says, and then two shall become three. But that's appropriate for that person because that person knows my story. That's the difference is you don't know my story. You barely know me. So why would you fix your mouth to say something like that? My, my thing is, if you realize that somebody has been married or together with somebody for an extended period of time and has not had children, I would err on the side of caution of just not mentioning it mm -hmm. unless that person mentioned something to you. Because for all you know, they've been trying for that extended period of time and have been unable to be successful. They have decided not to have children and it's none of your business or any other slew of reasons. Do <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just so inconsiderate uh, for people to just, just insert them things, like get, get, out of, get out of my ovaries, get out of my bed. Get out of all of those things unless I have shared it with you. And even if I have shared it with you, we talk about it on my terms. I mean, is that not the case with our relationship? You know my entire story and we talk about it on my terms. You got to bring that up. I'm not I bring it up. If anything, you just flat out ask me, how are things going? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm period. And you could be directly meaning related to that, or you could just be meaning it in general, but I take it how I want to take it. And I share with you what I want to share with you at that moment. You know, and it just, it baffles me how inconsiderate people can be. I think it's like, people just don't, people don't know the struggle. People don't know the struggle. And you don't uh, like understand that other people can struggle until you are exposed to the struggle. And hopefully this will expose people to the struggle of it in a um, non-confrontational way so that they can be sensitive to whoever it is in their life that this may apply to. Um, I, it's, it's a hard it's a hard thing to go through i am sure and it's also a hard thing to watch somebody go through um it's been hard on how to navigate even our relationship when it comes to that topic like and we've been you know knowing each other for 20 years but you know i've tried to be sensitive to the situation that you and your husband are, are facing right now. And it's just something that's hard to understand. I think if you haven't been exposed to it, like I said, and people just, I mean, people are jerks. They can be. And, and I think that people also have to realize that the process of conception is so miraculous like if you think about what has to happen to conceive a child mm -hmm. it's so miraculous so even if you've had an unplanned pregnancy or in your case you instantly get pregnant like it's it's a miracle no um so jet mentioned before that our stories are like opposite when it comes to this um and you know in a nutshell i had a birth control like i had an iud in um for ooh, like maybe four years um and we decided okay it's time to get going if we're gonna be having kids it's it, we need to get going because i'm 30 so you know um but I took it out on like December 6th and I got, I was pregnant by New Year's. So like it happened so fast. Like I thought we would, like I had a vacation planned 
like on a beach and like I was like okay we're gonna have you know it'll be a few months and like I had to cancel the vacation and all this things just happen like super fast um which is a, a complete blessing and I would have never even seen it as a blessing until I went through it and then saw you know the opposite happening happening with some women around me and so even like knowing that I was pregnant and like it, the joy of that like I was still nervous about telling you like I was very hesitant like I was just like I want to plan this outright like I don't want it to be like around a bunch of people I don't want it to be like in front of in public anywhere like I was like okay and just the Lord worked out to where you were coming you know in wait I want to tell I want to tell I want to tell okay. okay oh my god so I'm gonna try not to cry I did good on that day and I didn't cry but it's just a great memory so and I know that you wanted to make it very special and so she made it very special when she told me that she was pregnant and her husband didn't really want you to tell people yet so I will say that made it even more uh, significant. And so um, me and another one of our line sisters were headed down to see you um, to, to just hang out and have a girls weekend. And um, so we got there and uh, we usually stay in your guest room. And she has this felt board that she has sitting on a table in her guest room. And it said, hello, auntie. And I was like, <laughs> wait what <laughs> I was I was confused for a second and then I caught on to it and I was like oh my gosh and I did so good I did not cry which usually y'all I'm a crier okay I could cry at the drop of a dime but I was more so ha so happy and so shocked that like just I mean literally I mean, it was in your doctor was even shocked at how fast you got pregnant so that's how legit crazy it was for it to be like hello auntie wait what you just took out your birth control yesterday <laughs> and even so, even that like when we went to confirm the pregnancy with the doctor my my nurse was like I cannot believe you're back so soon. But she was just like, don't tell your girlfriends how quickly it happened. She was just like, she kind of put me up on game and I hadn't even thought about that yet. But she was just kind of like, you know, just be mindful that it don't typically work like this for a lot of women. So just be mindful. And now then that's what triggered me to be like, oh, okay. Like I need to be sensitive to other people about this. So yeah and i mean you there are some situations in which you learn going through it um and i completely understand that i think just in general for people watching err on the side of caution and stay out of people's business unless they want to share with you don't inquire period now i will say okay so i know for me personally that you have this idea in your mind of what it's going to be like to raise children. Mm -hmm. And you have the uh, plans that you have of, I'm gonna do this, I'm not gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm not gonna do this. Would you say that like your plans that you had, your ideas that you had in mind are falling in line or is, are things just completely different than what you thought they would be? You know, I having, our son has really opened my mind up to the fact that I used to talk mad stuff like just talking about what I would never do and I don't understand people that do that with their kid da, 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 da. I was just talking out of my butt I had no clue no clue what it was really gonna look like to have a, a kid to have a baby so like I remember, I remember a com like conversations with Philip about planning for children, like what that was going to look like. And for years I was, I mean, you know, I was just like, eh, I don't really know if kids is for me. Like I may not, like, I don't know if I have to, like, 
but Philip was always very sure that he wanted children. There was no wavering on his part. But I remember telling him like, I don't want to be those people that fall in love with their kid. That's just like all about their kid. Like they can't see nothing else. They don't know what's happening in the world. Like they just focusing on their kid. And here I am, quit my job. I'm a stay at home mom. I never would have thought, ever would have thought that I would leave my career that I have a master's degree in to focus on this little person. And to be honest with you, I couldn't be happier. happier. I am so thankful that I can give him a hundred percent of who I am every day as his mom. And so like, is it, you know, the way I envisioned it? No, it's not the way I envisioned it. Do I feel like the Lord stepped in and created this atmosphere that was best for my family? Yes. And that is what we needed. Like, I'm so in love with my son. <laughs> I love him so much. Like, he Who just, isn't. How could you not be? But Who is not in love with that boy? <laughs> he just started walking like a couple weeks ago. I cried. I counted how many times I cried that day. I cried like eight times before noon. Like it was just so much. And that is not Avis. Not that is <laughs> no. You are a new woman. A new but woman. Completely. I'm not a crier. I don't cry. Like, I, I don't cry. I don't cry. And I pride myself. I used to pride myself on not crying. But he just turned me to mush. Just the second. Just mush. So, you know, it's been a beautiful experience, you know, and I am so thankful and so grateful that we have him. And I want that for the people that want it too. So I want that for you, Jet. Like I want that for my other friends that are struggling to conceive and just all the turmoil that you go through to even get to that point is is so unimaginable to me. Unimaginable. Um, I have a, a set of friends who are considering adoption right now. And I think that is absolutely beautiful. They had gone through years of trying to conceive and just, it just was, it seemed like at this point, it wasn't in the cards. The Lord can do anything, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but they're going through the process of, you know, submitting applications and stuff like that. And I'm just so excited for them. I'm so excited for them, for the prospect of being able to raise a person like that is such a huge responsibility and it's such a blessing. And I'm just grateful and I'm praying for everybody who may be struggling with that because, you know, it's, it's something that I can't, and even, even people that have had kids. I have another friend who has children and she's gone through a couple miscarriages in between each child that she's had. Like for every child that she's birthed, she's lost a child. And that wow. just blows my mind too. Like, what does that even mean? But she is, you know, very, um, very um, in the word. Like she knows the Lord. She loves the Lord. Like, and she has been able to find a blessing in losing those children. And when you get to that point, like, you know that you're covered by Jesus. Like the peace that he's able to give you, the clarity he's able to give you in that season. Like she had posted something um, talking about what that blessing meant, like losing the child that she lost just recently, what the blessing was in that. And I, I had to read the post a couple times because it just, I just couldn't wrap my mind around being able to find a blessing and having a miscarriage. But Jesus will provide you with what you need at the time that you need it. Um, and so it's just interesting to see how people's lives play out in different ways and what they gain from it and how they change. Absolutely. Cause speaking of just how things we have planned in our head don't 
ever go the way we think they're gonna go. Um, whether it's having children, struggling to have children, um, when you get married, just that initial plan of like, okay, this is what it's gonna be. So we're gonna get married, we'll probably be married for two or three years, then we'll start a family, we'll have kids and bop, 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 we'll do this uh, and all of those things. And then you realize that you have no control over anything. You have zero control over anything that happens in your life. And God chooses the people to go through the things that they go through for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you look at Sarah. I mean, my goodness. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't imagine being in her position um, and wanting a kid so bad, not having it. And then just like those friends that we were just talking about, you want it so bad it doesn't happen and then years down the line at an age in which the entire world and every doctor in the universe would tell you that you cannot have a child why you pregnant <laughs> what <laughs> you can't tell me that does not show you that we have no control over anything and i after a few years of struggling with um, us having a miscarriage, I felt like my blessing in that was knowing that God hears me, it just wasn't my time. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to get pregnant because I've gotten pregnant before, but it, that time was just not my time. And he had to let me know that. He had to let me know that you'll get pregnant, you'll just get pregnant in my time. And that's a hard concept to accept. And it's kind of just like, you want to be like, well, you ain't have to show me like that, doc. Like, you ain't have to deliver the message to me that rough. But sometimes God just, he just has to show us what the deal is. He has to, because we don't want to sit and listen. I'm going to like in reference to like sitting in a quiet place and listening and, and doing that. Sometimes you got to be slapped upside the head a couple times to get the message, you know? And that's me. That's my story personally. Um, but you do. I mean, there's nothing you can do but try to find the blessing in whatever your situation is. Whether it's, I, and I'll reference it again, unplanned pregnancy. Whether it's be struggling to conceive. Um, whether it's having to go through the process of adoption and struggles that may come along with that because that's a child um, from situation that you may have no that you have no control over so other things play into that um all of those things like god has the final say no matter how we twist and turn it we can want and we can plan and we can have ideas of how things will look or the type of mother i'll be or type of father my husband will be and all of those things but God has the final say in it all he really does and that, um, that's what you want like what God has for us is so much greater than what we have planned for ourselves like <laughs> and it you know you have to you got to live some life to to really get that message like you got to go through some things. You have to go through some character building exercises to understand that. And those character building exercises hurt like hell sometimes. Um, but if we are in a line, I think, with what he wants for us and wanting what he wants for us, as opposed to wanting what we want for ourselves, like you will be able to find the silver lining you will be able to have a testimony because i mean what you're doing right now is sharing your testimony so who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow who knows what's gonna happen a week from now um what your predicament may be if it's if it changes then that just strengthens and it, it changes your testimony i won't say strengthens it changes your testimony if your situation doesn't change, 
you still have that testimony. So being open, I think, to sharing that with the world, right, because we don't know who's going to watch this, is, I think, a beautiful thing. And I'm very proud of you for sharing that because I know that, that it is not comfortable and it's, it's something that you're still in. It's different sharing a testimony that's completed, right? It's done with, I've learned my lesson, I'm not in that position anymore, I can share it with the world. But to share a testimony that you're still fighting through, you're still struggling through, you're still learning through, I think, um, is, is greater, is harder, and it shows a lot of your growth as a person and as a Christian and as a woman, so... I'm proud of you and I'm glad that Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I totally agree with you because uh, I will admit I am not perfect. I still get frustrated. I still get sad. I still get angry. Uh, I still try to refrain my, keep myself from questioning God um, because that's, that's my human frustration and my, my desire to have what I want right now. Um, so it is part of my testimony that I'm still going through and that I'm trying to be a better child of God and I'm trying to be a better wife and trying to, to do all of these things, um, that I know I'm supposed to be doing and not worrying because the Bible talks about why, why are you worrying? Can you even add a day to your life? I can't. I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the, the only thing I have control over is what me and my husband do. And now what, what is produced from that is all up to God. That, mir that miracle that we talked about, God is the only one that can make that happen. Mm -hmm. Those two little pieces meeting <laughs> and laying, laying up in that thing. I can't do that. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, I got to, I have to, I have to trust God mm -hmm. and I cannot worry about it because I can't do anything besides that one step that me and my husband can do. And that's it. So I just want to encourage, um, and my takeaway for this would be that, um, ultimately God is the only one that can give you the best plan for your life. Um, you have your idea, your plan of what you want to happen, how you want it to happen, when you want it to happen. But essentially, our plans are trash compared to God's plans uh, because he's got the best plan for you. So trust him, whether you're struggling with infertility, whether you're struggling in your marriage in general, whether you have kids and you and your husband haven't made that transition into having three of you smoothly, what, or four or whatever, however many, because there's different levels and different stages. So if those transitions aren't working well for you, um, put your trust in God. You can't change your spouse only God can. You can't control what happens outside of having sex with your husband if you're struggling with infertility. So trust God, give it over to him. If he can do it for Sarah, he can do it for any one of us, if it is in his will. I agree, completely. And I will also add, Stay out of people's ovaries, y'all. Just take this as a word to the wise. Stay out of people's beds. Stay out of people's ovaries because you never know someone's struggle. Um, and it's just, it's honestly nobody's business. Unless that person decides to share, it's none of your business. And I say that with love. I really and truly do. Uh, because there's some people who can't say anything, don't know how to say it, you know, just don't want to make people feel uncomfortable and all of that stuff. So I'm just saying it like a blanket statement. Just leave people, leave newlyweds, leave people alone when it comes to having children. And then when they celebrate the fact that they're pregnant, say congratulations. Not it's about time. None of that. 
because there are people, there are women who would who would give their last everything to be in the position to be a mother. Mm -hmm. um, if you are a mother, I understand things get hard, but you also have to be careful about what you complain about because there are women who would give their everything to be able to have sleepless nights mm -hmm. and baby throw up all over them every day. Mm -hmm. You know, so like just everybody, just be careful with the words you use. That's all I'm saying. So. Thank you. All right. Well, I hope that um, you guys got something out of this episode, kind of just sharing, a sharing episode, I think that was mostly. So I hope that in us sharing our testimony that you got something out of it. Um, so we love to wrap up every episode with how we won at adulting this week. Um, you know, everybody wants to be an adult and then that thing come and you just be like, you need bills stopping and they don't ever stop. Okay. So we want to celebrate the times that we have went above and beyond, or maybe just did the bare minimum to make sure that we were being our best selves, our best, the best wives, the best children of God, the best mothers or whatever we could be. Um, so I would like to share y'all. Y'all don't think I'm lying, but I'm not. I am telling the truth, okay? I would not tell a lie. I ordered another package. Y'all, and again, it just disappeared. It never made it to my house. USPS has put out a conspiracy against me. So this time it was a swimsuit. And again, it was USPS. I get all my Amazon packages. I get all my FedEx packages. I get everything but USPS, okay? So I ordered something else, never made it to me. But I got the, the message that said it was delivered. So I call USPS, where's my package? It wasn't delivered, was it in my mailbox? Wasn't at my front door, where is it? I had to go up there filed a whole nother report and complaint. Apparently, USPS had my address being forwarded with no forwarding address. Mind you, I have not moved in two years. So how, why, where? So they sent my package back to the person that was mailing it to me, and I never got it. When I tell you I was so upset, she couldn't even figure out why they would do that. The, the USPS people didn't even know why they would do that. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, I will say, and this is a black owned business that I'm going to highlight. Uh, she had great customer service. I'll highlight her in a future video, but she worked with me. We stayed in communication, emailing, figuring out. She's just sending it to my mom's house. So I don't have to have that problem, but I feel like I wanted adulting because this time I went I went off. I lost it a little bit, but I was pissed off because this is the second time with USPS that at least this package we found. The last package I never found. So I'm still pissed off about that, but my bank gave my money back. But nonetheless, it's the principle, you know? I ordered something, I want my product. Whew, so that's how I won. I'm proud of myself. Congratulations for going off. Oh, Thanks, yeah. sis. <laughs> um, I don't have one this week. I ain't got one. Uh, I I feel like I've been an adult by surviving the week. And your son is alive. Your husband is alive. You are alive, and everybody's fed. That's a win, sis. That's a win. So that's I'm that's how I went an adult in this week. I am here for it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again for tuning in. So thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate your time with us. Um, so don't forget to like, share, and comment. And we want to hear from you. So if you have anything that people always ask you about, getting in your business, getting in your marriage, getting in your bed, like Jed said, um, let us know what that thing is. Put it in the comments. We'll talk about it. Um, you'll probably be sharing something that somebody else gets to. So we want to build this community. So please, please comment engage with us we want to engage with you um so thank you again for watching and just be on the lookout for our next episode on fridays hi